The Fallout TV show is unbelievably good. I want to hear why. When it comes to video game television adaptions, how they turn out can often feel like Lady Luck flipping a coin. You've made your last delivery. True. Arcane, Edge Runners, The Last of Us all landed on heads. And then you have... Oh my goodness! And of course, there's the fiasco with Henry Cavill leaving The Witcher show. So when I heard that there was a Fallout TV series in production, well, I was a little skeptical, but those skepticisms were laid to rest. And the only thing I could say was, what in the goddamn? I expected the Fallout TV series to be average at best, but it is unbelievably good. You wanna make my cock explode now? What? Fall I am willing to bump up my review of the Fallout TV show to a six out of 10, just if they remove every single romance scene from the series because every single one of them is unbelievably cringe. The idea that Maximus doesn't even know what jacking off is is just the most stupidest and preposterous thing ever and the fact that Lucy's obsessed pretty much with, uh, with it is also completely cringe. Fallout show was produced by Jonathan Nolan, brother of Christopher Nolan, and if you know these guys, you know that they rarely miss. The TV show has renewed interest in the other Fallout games as well, causing- Yeah, we- everyone expected this, yes. A recent surge in their player counts, likely because the show reminds people what they love about Fallout. I, I, I have an idea, what if, uh, what if I do- I don't agree with that at all. We were to do like a thumbs up. <laughs> So this video is going to be mostly spoiler free, but if there is something I want you to experience in the show yourself, then I'll put something up on screen. This video has no sponsor because it's sponsored by me. Cringe. And my public discord server, the Act Clan, which you should join right now. It's a great place to talk about games, shoot the shit, and just have a good time. We also have a channel where you can- The Act Clan is such a funny name though. You can post fan edits and you know what? This place is cursed. I'm actually going to delete it. The show follows a trio of main characters. Lucy, a member of Vault Lucy is great. 33, who goes into the wasteland to rescue her dad. The ghoul, aka The ghoul is great. Cooper, a former movie star turned bounty hunter. And Maximus. A Maximus is a sin that should be removed from this world because his character fails on literally every level. A member of the Brotherhood of Steel who has aspirations of becoming a knight. Now I'm going to assume you're familiar with the premise of Fallout. Nuclear warfare threatens the world. A company named Vault Tech is contracted by the government to create Fallout shelters, AKA vaults. Nuclear war does break out in 2077. Hundreds of years pass. Well, let's open the vaults and see what the world is like. What the fuck is that? The Fallout universe is expansive and deep. I mean, these are RPGs you can play for thousands of hours. There's 27 years worth of lore and backstory to tap into. So translating that to the big screen was probably the hardest thing about making this show. And they failed with the lore spectacularly, I agree. But they've managed to capture the essence of what makes Fallout, Fallout. But just like the games, it's not solely about the main objective. It's also about- Wait, 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 wait. So- is he showing this scene as in, oh, you can follow to use substances? But this is not a random substance, in fact. This is something that ghouls need to take to not become feral, which is a complete retcon of everything that has existed in the Fallout series since the beginning of time. Fallout, Fallout. But just like the games, it's not solely about the main objective. It's also about the breadth of side content and side characters. There are tons of quirky, funny people that populate the wasteland. Dude, I actually did like this this guy. It, at first, I didn't like him, but the moment that he was like, I'm gonna end it, you know, with a force multiplier stuck in his mouth, I was like, hey, that's, that's funny. There are tons of quirky, funny people that populate the wasteland, and they do a great job of illustrating how people have adapted to this new... Okay, uh, this is not true. This is absolutely false. The t tons of quirky characters that you see make literally not a single lick of sense. Uh, everyone pretty much of uh, the people who are living outside of vaults is portrayed as being literal imbeciles. All of them 
are mentally damaged individuals who can't even figure out how much 2 plus 2 is. Every person above ground is portrayed as a drooling moron. And the first town they go into doesn't make sense because there's people who you would assume are raiders walking around in the town. And why would raiders walk around in a normal town? I have no idea. New world. I figured we should talk about the criticisms and get those out of the way because there's not too many. The biggest and obviously there's most important critique. Ron Perlman doesn't voice the intro. F. F in the chat. You know, I don't know if you know this, but war... I didn't even know it's the same guy for every every intro of whatever changes. I didn't even know that. Ron Perlman has been in every fall, so it's a little disappointing that he's not here. Regardless, the show still has a fantastic opening sequence. The show also doesn't go out of its way to explain all of the tech and lore of the universe, so if you're not... Well, there's not much to explain in tech and lore. It's kind of very self-explanatory and understandable. No game explained its tech. Uh, the the whole reason why the Fallout uh, universe is, by the way, it is, is because they never created a con uh, the the superconductor or whatever microchips or something. They didn't create it, uh, They didn't create something that makes uh, computers small. There was something that we created. I think it was the conductor or whatever. I don't remember. But yeah, that's the reasoning. Who cares? already familiar with fallout some things might be confusing or unclear but because the show is good that'll make people curious in the lore and they'll want to look things up you know what are the other vaults like some of the fight choreography mostly like hand no not really uh the show makes an extremely the show makes me not even question vaults because the vault 33 that we start in is completely normal place seemingly which more is off-putting to fans because why the hell is this a normal vault please explain and it doesn't really get explained until the last episode the hand combat stuff can look a little soft sometimes characters are put in really dangerous situations and they just kind of bullshit their way through it but the biggest complaint i've been seeing is about red uh, the only situation where they kind of BS their way out of it is in the Super Duper Mart where Lucy just, you know, luckily kicks the Roomba and it cuts her open, you know, and she can escape. That's the only thing. I can't actually imagine any other situation. Conning. The history and lore of Fallout is really fucking cool. The series has been around since 97, so naturally fans want to protect that. Especially since the show has been confirmed as canon, so it needs to line up with the other games. Now I'm no but expert on the lore of Fallout, and typically- Now I'm admittedly, while it doesn't, I again have to say this, I don't care. If the show, if the show obviously mishandles the lore a lot, it retcons very, very- core basic things about you know the fallout franchise but why should i care about this if the games are constantly retconning the lore anyway i i don't feel like caring about it with every new game that we have had since fallout 3 the lore has been retconned in some major way okay so i mean if the games don't respect their own lore why should i care that the tv show doesn't I'm not one who obsesses over lore in video games and consistent timelines and all that. It's pretty easy for me to suspend my disbelief if what I'm watching or playing is amazing, entertaining, and immersive enough. But since the show has been confirmed as canon, this is a new direction for the Fallout series. It could have a huge impact on the next game. Obviously, keep- Oh yeah, the, my, I have a speculation on this. The Fallout games have been stuck in time for forever. There is absolutely no pushing forward with the rebuilding of civilization or, or anything. In every game, we just essentially do some random stuff in the wasteland, maybe save our dad or some other family member, and that's pretty much it. And, this, and destroy some kind of, you know, opposing faction that we don't like. But the story doesn't get pushed forward at all. And I think the Fallout TV show is intended to be used to push the narrative forward. That the world is going to start to be rebuilt and whatnot. People don't want Bethesda to fuck that up. Now, this is my perspective as a Halo fan. 
if retcons and lore consistency are the biggest complaints people have that's a good problem to have the producers of the halo show created an entirely new timeline just to fuck it up and intentionally ignore the lore of halo that's how far they wanted to go in the not halo direction so often we see adaptions that look and feel nothing like the source material <laughs> this was the first time i thought all that to just slowly levitate a stone what i'm trying to say oh he didn't show the full clip the funny part is that stone actually hits someone <laughs> is that i'm bitter <laughs> i'm bitter that you guys have a great show <laughs> and that's not to say you can fuck with the lore as much as you want well admittedly yeah it's probably better than halo that's for sure though on as long as the end product is good but it's nice to keep things in perspective you know the show is great it's entertaining it 100 percent feels like fallout in every way and that's what makes the fallout tv series so awesome it's like it kind of feels like fallout i would not say that it truly feels like fallout but you know everything looks fallout in it because you know you got the jumpsuits you got everything so you know there is no way it doesn't feel at least somewhat like fallout identity and tone goosey mclean oh no no it's it's lucy nope it's this is arguably one of the worst episodes ever uh, the last three episodes of the show went so hard with the goofy, stupid humor. It was extremely off-putting. Very off-putting. And especially this. I think this was episode seven. Complete garbage. Like, nothing here makes sense. They're just randomly worshipping Moldova for a, no reason, I guess? Uh, why are they worshipping her? I don't know. Uh, why does no one else worship her? I I, I don't know. I, I it's, it makes no sense. Says Goosey. Fallout is part post-apocalyptic depression-fueled nightmare and part hilarious dark comedy. They absolutely nailed this vibe. You're a coward. You know that shit. We all are, Norm. Yeah, this is a good scene, though. Uh, people are uh, people are saying, and I actually agree with the uh, with the fact that Lucy's brother, this guy, is the fourth main character because he is. He actually, he's actually the only reasonable character that asks questions. <laughs> like, wait a minute, the, how did the Raiders get into the like? Well, you trust me, you don't want the answers how they got in there because the answers don't make sense and they're stupid and they complete. Episode one. Everything that happens in the vault is pure BS that literally cannot make any sense on any goddamn level, okay? It can't in any way make sense. No one can make the make that episode make sense how the raiders get into the vaults. We, admittedly, someone is probably gonna, oh, they got Lucy. Yeah, and how did they get Lucy's mom's pit boy after she was either nuked or burnt alive? Why did they wait 10 years to go into the vault? I don't know. Why didn't they go into Vault 33 considering she was from Vault 33? I don't know. How the hell is a vault openable from the outside with a pit boy from a random person? I don't know. I don't know about any of this. I don't understand any of it. And you can't make it reason make sense. That's the worst part. You know that shit? We all are, Norm. That's why we live in a vault. You can tell that great care was taken to get the details, the intricate subtleties just right. Sound effects like- Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Except the fact that when the raiders come inside the vault, uh, the pit boys, the radiation detection, none of that spikes. But when Lucy figures out something wrong and she points, uh, she points her pit boy to, to the person that she just slept with, it shows that, wait a minute, he's radioactive. And she instantaneously figures out, ah, he's from the surface. He's a surface dweller. Ah, they're raiders. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also, I have never made this complaint, but... 
So, Lucy as a kid was taken outside of the vault with her mom. They met Moldover. And Lucy somehow magically has no recollection from the age when she was, I'm assuming, seven-ish that she was outside of the vaults. And then her dad followed them and got them back and burned down the city or whatnot with Moldova inside it. Well, her mom inside it at the bare minimum. Um, and no one somehow magically remembers that the vault was open because still the only way to leave the vault is through the vault door how again how does any of this make sense the the answer is it doesn't for radiation are there there's a lot of things hardcore fans will notice and appreciate i don't think there was ever a joke in the show that made me now most of these things anyone who has played fallout are gonna notice and appreciate that's why it kind of feels like fallout because you know uh, the same way it kind of feels like Halo if you watch the Halo TV series because things are recognizable from that universe. Let me roll my eyes, groan, or sigh. No Marvel-esque. Uh-oh. He's behind me, isn't he? The humor lands, and it's funny. Nope. This was him? Hard to tell. Show me the illustration. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This scene was... Okay, I have to give it to him. This was probably the funniest scene that we had in terms of humor that was not off-putting or just childishly dumb. That's, that's definitely him. A lot of the jokes are purely visual. There's one part where this character Thaddeus is waiting for pickup at a radio station and he's talking to the radio operator who's trying to- Ah, uh, yeah, this was complete cringe. I tell him about how nobody appreciates the music he plays and Thaddeus is just like, oh yeah, yeah. Cool. Then it zooms out and he says, Great job on these booby traps, by the way. Really good. Hey, thanks. And it's like, <laughs> all these people died because they... Yeah, this is also still cringe. Very cringe, in fact. Especially what happens after when he gets shot through the neck and he's like, Why am I alive? Oh, I'm a ghoul. Ah, yeah, if you did not know, ghouls are now immortal, immune to bullets, immune to pretty much any damage, except maybe the head. But when the main character needs to shoot a ghoul and they shoot him in the chest, they still magically die. So who knows? Are ghouls immortal? Are ghouls not immortal? Who knows? He wanted to confront the radio guy over the shitty music he played. The show is also wildly out of pocket at times. You want to have sex? This is one of the worst and autistic scenes, and not because of the do you want to have sex bot. I'll explain. Let's see. You mean use my cock? Again, uh, we're supposed to believe that Maximus has no idea what masturbation is. Yeah. Men will get a signal. Okay, so, uh, so this scene is redundantly completely moronic let me explain the full context of what's happening here this is exactly after they get uh, get into vault vault four by accident they wake up they're taken care of and now uh the people who were taking care of them go out and now at this point by the way they can see everyone just walking past them there's there's a window can you actually see it from uh, maximus's point of view here let's check is he behind a window no but there is a window that can literally see inside the place that they are and this is the end of the episode this is the cliffhanger effectively because after they say this and maximus says no it goes out through the door and it shows that uh, above the door it's labeled test subjects which implies they're not in a good vault, and that's the whole gimmick, that the vault 4 is a bad vault. And Maximus thinks it's good, and Lucy thinks it's bad, because they're hiding shit or whatever. And it zooms out, and it's test subjects. So, you're thinking, oh my god, they're already experimenting with them with some kind of, you know, I don't know, hormones or whatever, right? But then it turns out that this is a completely normal vault. They're just in a room that's labeled test subjects. No experiments are on them are conducted. Lucy just randomly asks Maximus, Hey, hey, wanna pump that baby better in me, boy? How thick that pipe, yo? Just, just randomly. 
for no reason. And again, there's a window in the room, clearly visible. It's a small room and people are going past it constantly. Okay? Yeah, that's how it goes. It's dumb. It's redundantly dumb. You want to have sex? You mean use my cock? Yeah. Men will get so a dumb. signal like this and straight Again, up- Again, if all of these scenes were removed, the show would have literally just been better. You're like, I wonder if she's into me. You'll be blindsided by some crazy shit that happens. If you don't audibly shout, what the fuck? At least once while watching this, then you are a robot who cannot feel emotion. It's time to power off. Lucy is from Vault 33, and most of the vaults have some kind of experiment on the people in them. So each group of vault dwellers is kind of weird and different in their own way. Lucy comes from a vault where everyone is super optimistic, naive, soft, and kind. And so much of the comedy revolves around the contrast between, you know, her obnoxious, upbeat attitude and what's really outside of the vault. They do a fantastic job of showing what life and culture is like in this vault. At one point, they hold an election for new overseer, and one of the candidates says, You ran a great campaign. I know. Must have put 10 posters up. What you gotta do when you put a few posters up and let democracy run its course. Ella Purnell, the actress for Lucy, said she wanted to approach the role like Ned Flanders in the apocalypse. This is the most accurate description of her character. She's fucking awesome. Okay, so thankfully they actually made Lucy into... Uh, and I, I wonder if this was unintended in that case. Because Lucy being the fish out of water character is kind of blatantly obvious, but her character development actually is not that simplistic. Uh, Lucy gets confronted with her beliefs, especially by the ghoul, who is a complete stark contrast to her. The ghoul was a good person, but he changed and became an evil person because he thought that he, that's what needs to be done in order for him to survive. And so he has. And thus, because he says survived for such a long time, being the way he is, forsaking the good inside of him and the good person that he previously was, he has survived. And then you see Lucy, someone who has not proved survival and yet is spouting these, this nonsense about not being a genocidal murderer. And then he puts, a, and then essentially Lucy's convictions get tested. And she, and she shows that she can survive the vastes, that she, you know, she, she can do all of these things. And yet, she does not forsake her ideals, forsake her ideals that humans are a little bit better than just, you know, uh, killers. And she proves the ghoul is wrong. He could have stayed a nice person and done, done the right thing if he wanted to. But he chose the easy way out by being a bad person and a murderer just to survive easier. That's what Lucy's character effectively does and effectively shows. And that's why I like Lucy's character a lot, because it's the best story, it's the best character progression, and, you know, she actually shows dedication and stuff. It's, it's great. But I have to ask at this point, is this random? Was that not intended by the showrunners? Because it feels like it isn't as time passes and I think more about it. I think that this was just a random consequence of them trying to be, Oh, look at that, she never learns and she's dumb. Uh. Throughout their show, she almost reflects like the player's experience playing Fallout for the first time. You know, initially you start off naive, like, well, how bad could it be? And by the end, you're like, this place is fucking awful. Lucy's character arc. No one plays Fallout like that as much as I know. Going from naive vault dweller to woman of the wasteland is a really interesting one. Now, it wouldn't be Fallout if there wasn't some extra. God, you're such a simplistic buffoon. If that's what well, that's what you think makes a character interesting. Oh, they were naive and weak at that end. They're not naive and strong. 
If you think that's good character writing, then you should probably try and get, you know, to become a writer for She-Hulk or The Rings of Power. Because you would fit in perfectly there, you absolute imbecile. Supreme violence and gore. And to be honest, the show kind of drops the ball here. It's really tame. We do a little trolling. No, the violence is insane exactly like the games people get their legs blown off they get dismembered decapitated yeah that's and the good are amazing a lot of times i can't tell what if anything is cg or green screened the show is simply a spectacle to watch at one point in episode two i was like isn't cgi pretty much the effectively same thing as green screening honestly why are they using so much slow-mo then i realized i'm a fucking idiot they're recreating the iconic cinematic kill cam. It's amazing. This is the first fight where the ghoul pops off, and yes, it's really good. Mwah. It's so good. Now that I think about it, I don't know if I saw any energy weapons or laser nope. guns in the show. But there's so much from Fallout to tap into, and we gotta have stuff for season two, right? There's a language to cinema that has not been ignored. The Fallout series does a lot of showing. Scenes are often carried by the expressions of the actors. They dictate a scene and tell us more than words could. Everyone's acting is fucking phenomenal. You know, brevity is the soul of wit. True. They go for a less is more approach with dialogue. True. Like, I think what saves the uh, this TV show and makes it watchable is the fact that every actor is really good. Lucy's really good. The ghoul is really good. Maximus, even though he's by far the versely written and dumb character, still the acting from him is really good. They're all top notch. And I think that hugely saves it. And this works really well in scenes where Norm is uncovering the dark secrets of the vault and what's really going on. And one of my pet peeves in storytelling is when I. The. The. The scenes with Norm when he interacts with the, the lady from Vault 31 is like, I mean, is she trying to actually intimidate him or is she just being kind of nice but she doesn't want to talk to him? I can't tell. I really, really can't tell. I notice that I'm being fed exposition. Like, when characters talk in a way that feels like they're speaking to the audience, they're just not looking at the camera, bugs the shit out of me, takes me out of the story. But in the Fallout show, I get so wrapped up in what's happening that I forget when scenes are meant to inform me of something important. This is a sign of well-written... Uh, this is pro this is probably the only sign of well-written well show that that is true. There is no random exposition dump, you know? In, in typical bad shows, the way that this works is like, you know... The fellowship of whatever goes up to a city and is like, ha ha, yes, this is the city. And then they just give a five minute exposition dump about everything you need to know about the city because there's no natural way to fit it in. Thought out dialogue that lets the viewer feel like they're uncovering things with the character and not just being told about them, if that makes sense. What makes the show so easily likable is also do they do many expedi expedition dumps, really? I don't think they do. Well, not expedition dumps, but are there many scenes that actually explain how the world works? I don't think so. I really don't think they even exist. I mean, the closest that we get is explaining what the vaults are by, you know, the flashbacks of Howard Cooper, and that's pretty much it how it pays service to the fans with numerous references callbacks every episode had me like yo yo that's that thing from the games that i'm not going to explicitly mention because you should watch the show yourself so you can have that oh shit moment like i did now i've been bringing up a lot of things that the fallout show does i really want to know which moment honestly that is because i can't even figure out one doesn't do mistakes it doesn't make and i think that's equally important to what it does well when making a show like this because if the fan service is too on the nose too blatant you know it can feel like a huh huh fallout's pretty cool huh yeah you like that you like that shit and there's never a moment like that everything feels natural it's just the right amount so by the way i have heard about uh about the slow-mo fighting scenes in, in in the show that we see 
Some people have been saying, Oh, they're doing bots! No, you idiot. It's the ghoul shooting. He doesn't have a pip boy. He's not doing bots, you idiot. Spoilers for anyone who hasn't watched the entire show. Uh, I'm gonna mention some references, Easter eggs, and cameos that I thought were really fucking cool. So if you want to have those oh shit moments yourself, uh, skip to the timestamp. No, we're not skipping. All right, now that it's just me and you, me and the real Fallout fans. How about that fucking Mr. House cameo? That was awesome. And all those scenes were- All of those cameos are bad, by the way. Um, th this is like what- uh, those scenes with Mr. House and whatnot are really bad because I don't- I don't pay, atten uh, pay attention enough to, uh, to the lore to know all of these things or remember them. But people commented about this because this is one of the things that um, people used to say, Oh, this show really likes the fans and respects the lot. It is exactly this scene. Not with, you know, a uh, house in particular, but, you know, for example, Big Mountain. Uh, people who actually remember the lore fully uh, are talking, uh, have written comments about this. Uh, that's not actually the person that should be representing Big Mountain for one. There's a different guy who's in charge. Second of all, the things they say about the casino are false because, uh, in New Vegas, the casino explicitly has been frozen in time because it never got to even open because the bombs dropped. It didn't magically just fail before the bombs. It never even was open truly to begin with. And a lot of other things like this. So this is one of the things that, you know, uh, the diehard defenders of the show are going to say, Oh, it really loves the fans and lore. Look at how lore accurate this is. But nothing truly is lore accurate at all in this show. So, you know, except the way that things look. That was awesome. And all those scenes where Norm is like, you know, on computer terminals, I was just waiting for the hacking screen to pop up. And when it did, oh, I don't know why I got so hyped on that. I was like, there's no way Norm's gonna fucking crack this password. And then of course he did, but Norm has obviously specced into science and intelligence. You know, little stuff like that just, it gets people excited. One of my favorite lines of dialogue that- It doesn't get people excited, it's just nice to have. I didn't jizz myself when I saw, you know, an accurate representation of a gun in this game, or the hacking, or the pit boy, you know? It was nice to have, but I know that if all of these small things that literally are pretty much considered Easter eggs at this point, even though I don't agree with them being Easter eggs, Easter eggs should be something hidden, you know, and whatnot, like the Todd Howard portrait in, uh, in the show. That's an Easter egg. But, you know, I would not consider any of this Easter eggs. And again, the the best the best that people usually say about the show is, Oh, it had that. Yeah, okay, it's like a super small thing. That doesn't make or break the show. Even if it didn't have it, it wouldn't make such a big difference. It's nice that it has it. It's, I think, better that it has it, obviously. But it's... it's it's nowhere near close to being an actual deciding factor. Is the show good? You muppet. It summarizes Fallout and Elder Scrolls better than any sentence ever has. What about the head? I need the head to get my dad yeah, back. Yeah, well, the wasteland's got its own golden rule. <laughs> oh, what's that? Thou shalt get sidetracked by bullshit every goddamn time. <laughs> Bruh, it, it's... This is not actually technical. Well, well... This is not technically a sidetrack, and this is one of the scenes I didn't understand, and I think this is actually also a thing that they kind of do poorly. When he just randomly goes away with Lucy, after his vials got smashed, you understand that, that he's no longer interested in the head, because what's the point of getting the head if he's gonna turn feral? Because we know that he's pretty relatively close to it from everything that happens, right? So, the thing about this is, um, why is he keeping Lucy alive in this case? He has already uh, tried to kill her twice, or was it one time? You know, in the city he pulls the trigger, but he's out of bullets. So, he has no reason to keep her alive at this point, and it doesn't kind of make sense that uh, he takes her. This is one of the scenes I didn't actually like. And there's no and there's no explanation, but there's actually a good explanation. This uh, this is uh, this is episode three, yeah, this is episode three, I think. 
And, you know, there is after an explanation why he's actually dragging Lucy along. Because after his vials got smashed and he no longer cares for the vial, uh, for cares for the head, it's like, wait, why are you taking Lucy with you? Is, she's just slowing you down. It doesn't make sense. Either let her go because you know that the, the, she doesn't matter, or just, you know, poop. But he does none of it. And it's not explained until you get to the very end of the destination that it, uh, that you know you understand why he keeps lucy alive and that's poor writing because she's not questioning at any point where are you taking me and he's not explaining why he needs her and actually some of his actions are bad he cuts off her finger um which is stupid because he lowered her price by doing it which is dumb okay so if this is just a bad scene shit every goddamn time bruh it, it's exactly like the games i also thought it was hilarious when knight titus is fighting the yao guy and he just starts running away like fuck fuck no that was not hilarious the brotherhood are weak cowardly stupid losers who don't even care about them uh, about each other uh the brotherhood is a complete effective joke here Squires are literally treated like replaceable meat puppets, okay? Now, verse, replaceable meat popsicles. If, like, the, bro the Brotherhood manifested in the real world would collapse roughly in five minutes because it just doesn't make sense on that too large of a scale. Fuck, fuck, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> and that's dumb. Because even when you have power armor, that still happens in the games that moment when lucy is in vault 4 and she holds up the ncr flag as the fallout theme plays ah oh, this is a good one though this the the music hits hard here that's some good stuff yeah fan service done right spoilers over another way they pay fan service is through the music ripping some of the most iconic tracks from the games they got the list of i'm not gonna lie the menu music is the only one I noticed. Now, admittedly, I'm not saying the music is bad or anything, but that's the only one I noticed. Best bops from the series in here. They have music that was featured in the games, but also entirely new tracks. And they fit so well within the scenes that I'm like, did they come up with this song for this scene? Because it always seems to match the lyrics with what's happening on screen this is a stupid scene lucy just magically finds him there's a lot of magic uh, magical people just being at the right places for no apparent reason by the way going on here it's uncanny when maximus and lucy are walking along some railroads it plays a version of i've been working on the railroad there's a ton of examples watch the show yourself and see how many you can find also you might notice that the outro for each episode has that slow moving never watch the outro for a single episode zoom out uh, that you see at the start of fallout 3 new vegas and the first game it's such a nice detail the show does a really great job of exploring the themes of fallout in new and interesting ways it's a very um, you can't explore the themes of fall, uh, themes of Fallout in new interesting ways. That is called adding to it. Like, for example, this. Also, also, I'm not gonna rewatch it, but isn't this small Dover? Because the ghoul has specifically a line, oh, that's not how I remember her, and I think this is mulled over. So, how is she magically surviving for 200 years, considering she's not a part of Fault Tech? Uh, the people in Vault 4 are literally hailing her as a god. Like, what's the deal here? Is she a part of Vault Tech? Is she a part of, you know, the Cabot household? Or what exactly is going on here? Guess it doesn't matter because she's dead, though. At least that's a pretty neat way to tie up something, just kill the character, then we don't have to ask questions and get really stupid answers. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm completely clueless. Is this not Moldova? So how did she survive 200 years? I, 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 I Make it make sense. Very deep narrative that you'll feel rewarded for paying attention. There's a lot of force. I think it is. And either way, uh, just, just a pro tip. You can find this actress naked online a lot. Yeah, you know, 
just just for research purposes there's a lot of foreshadowing that can probably go over your head and watching it a second time you'll be like oh people who watch this a second time typically start saying the show is bad by the way <laughs> i have not heard the single person say oh i watched the show a second time and it was good no people who watch the show a second time and start thinking about things that are happening are start to uh, start to say things are bad because again the moment you start to think about why things are happening and does this even make a single shred of sense the show kind of falls apart and not kind i'm just being nice it just literally falls apart now i haven't played all the games but i believe that a lot of the pre-war stuff that happened is rarely covered in fallout or shown the show does a fantastic job of swapping between past and present and seeing how things led to nuclear war who was responsible, why. The way backstory is woven into what's happening in the present is phenomenal. You slowly understand. It's not really phenomenal. It's just, it just explains things and you know, that's it. That it's not woven in nicely. Ar arguably it's completely not even woven in. A lot of the things that they say about the past are random and don't even have to do anything with the current situation in the present what's happening in the present and how what happened in the past caused the bombs to drop the fallout show may have some flaws and people who you know really care about the lore may not care for it but it's extremely faithful to the source material for me it's everything i hear this a lot i'm i'm so done anyway that was the conclusions act man act man doing doing what he knows best shilling Anyway, this was Quizzer Said saying thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and have a nice day. Bye bye.